Hello everyone and welcome to this week's lightweight Java Game Library 3D game tutorial. This will be the last tutorial this year, so the next one's going to be at the start of January where we'll begin with some more advanced topics like particles, skyboxes and multiplayer. But for this week it's going to be a pretty simple one because we're just going to be implementing texture atlases which are going to give us an efficient and easy way to add a bit more diversity into our 3D world. A texture atlas is just an image that contains multiple textures. So here I've got a 512 by 512 image which contains four different textures for the fern model. If we wanted to render these two ferns with our current system, we would have to create two separate textured models, even though they both use the same model, just with a different texture. At best, we could alter the rendering system to allow a textured model to have more than one possible texture, but then we'd still need to bind and unbind the different textures between rendering the two models, and this can be fairly expensive. Using texture atlases means that these two models use exactly the same model and exactly the same texture, so we only need one textured model. The only difference between the two is that they use different parts of the same texture. This means that before rendering them, we only have to bind this model and this texture once, and then we can render any number of different fern models without having to unbind or bind textures. And you can make these texture atlases as big as you like, so that they can hold loads of possible different textures for a model. To create a texture atlas, just get any individual textures for a particular model, and then use an image editing program to arrange them into a grid in one image. The texture atlases of course have to have dimensions that are powers of 2, and make sure that you arrange your textures into a square grid, so either 2x2 or 3x3 or 4x4 etc. I've put a link in the description so that you can download my texture atlas for the fern model if you want. Of course, if you then try to use this to texture your model, it will just be a mess. Imagine that this is a texture for a tree, and these are the texture coordinates for the tree model. If you start using a texture atlas, the texture coordinates will now be completely wrong. So obviously we need to recalculate the texture coordinates of the model depending on the size of the texture atlas and which part of the texture atlas we want the model to use. So in the code, the first thing that we need to do is in the model texture class where we now need a new attribute. This attribute will determine the number of rows in the texture atlas, seeing as we're now going to assume that any model texture could be a texture atlas. We'll set this to 1 as default, which would just be a normal texture, not really a texture atlas at all. So let's create a setter and getter for this value to allow us to set the number of rows in the atlas if the texture is indeed a texture atlas with multiple rows. In the entity class, we now need another attribute that indicates which texture in the texture atlas this particular entity uses. And the textures are going to be numbered like this, from left to right, and then from top to bottom. So we'll set this to 0 as default, uh, but I'm going to add a second constructor here for the entity, which will allow you to choose which texture index you want to use. So this takes in a texture index and it sets the attribute. So as I showed earlier, when using a texture atlas, we need to recalculate the object's texture coordinates depending on the atlas's size and the texture index of the entity in question. To calculate the new texture coordinates, we'll first have to scale down the original texture coordinates using the number of rows variable, a value which we already have in the model texture class. Then we need to add an x and y offset to each texture coordinate, depending on which texture in the atlas we want to use. So we need to convert our texture index variable in the entity class into an x and y offset. These calculations aren't too tricky. For the x offset, we'll first work out which column the desired texture is in by using the modulus operator. Then the x offset is easily calculated by dividing the current column by the total number of columns, which of course is the same as the number of rows. And we'll do a similar thing for the y offset. First calculate which row the texture is in by dividing the texture index by the number of rows and flooring the result. And then the y offset is found by dividing the current row by the total number of rows. So if we put all of this in the code, it will look something like this. So add these two methods into your entity class. So now we need to actually use these variables to recalculate the texture coordinates 
And we're going to do this in the vertex shader because all of the texture coordinates come through here anyway. So for every texture coordinate, we're going to recalculate it and then send it off to the fragment shader just like before. We're going to need some new uniform variables, of course, to which we can load up the size of the texture atlas and the X and Y offsets that we just calculated. So I'll create a float variable for the number of rows and a vec2 variable which can hold the X and Y offset. So let's actually do this calculation now, and we've already seen this calculation earlier in this video. First we scale down the texture coordinates by dividing by the number of rows, and then we simply add the offset. So now we have to do the usual boring stuff that we have to do every time when we create new uniform variables. So create an int variable for both of them so that we can hold their location. Then, as always, we need to get the location of those two uniform variables that we've just created. And this is the bit where you need to be careful of how you spell them. It has to be spelt exactly the same as you spelled the names of the uniform variables in the shader code. So make sure that you do that. And then we need to create a couple of methods that will allow us to load up values to those uniform variables. So the first one is to load up the number of rows. That will take in an int, which is the number of rows. And then we can call the load float method to load up the number of rows value to the location of that uniform variable. And we have to do the same for the offset. Now we'll take in the X and the Y offset. Uh, we're actually going to have to go into the shader program class now to create a method that can load up a 2D vector, because at the moment we can only load up 3D vectors. So change that, uh, change it to take in a vector 2F, and make sure that you call GL uniform 2F now to load up two floats instead of three. And then we can call that, and we can load up this 2D vector to the location of the offset uniform variable and we'll have to create uh, a vector 2f here to load up those values. So now in the entity renderer we need to call those two methods that we just created to actually load up the values. So we can load up the texture, uh, the number of rows in the atlas in the prepare texture model method. So we'll call that load number of rows and then texture dot get number of rows. To load the offsets we need to do that per instance per entity because it could be different for each entity. So in the prepare instance method we're going to call, call shader.load offset and that will take in the textures x offset and the textures y offset. And the final thing we have to do in the main game loop, for any textures that are texture atlases, you have to indicate how many rows are in that texture atlas. So here I've set the fern texture atlas to have two rows, uh, because it does have two rows. And then whenever you create an entity, that particular entity, you need to specify which index, which texture index you want to use, which part of that texture atlas do you want to use for this particular entity. Uh, but here I've just done a random number between 0 and 3, so that will create uh, a random texture for each of the ferns. So if we load that up and run that, you can see that all of the ferns have uh, their different textures. And you can see the four different textures here rendering on the ferns at random. But that is it for this week and for this year. Thank you guys so much for watching all of these tutorials. I really hope that you found them useful and I will be back in the new year with some more advanced topics like particles, skyboxes, sound effects, multiplayer and animations. Don't forget to keep in touch via my Facebook and Twitter pages. Links are in the description below. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have an awesome few weeks and I will see you all in the new year.